<laughs> well, here, here we are again at the farm. Love it out here, you know. Today I'm going to talk to you about, uh, again, the continuing story of rock dust. So a lot, I've gotten a lot of emails from how to do your own organic fertilizer. Everybody loves it. A few questions I didn't follow through and say, okay, you blend some of this and blend some of that together. I kind of figured it would be obvious, you know, because you basically you blend it all together. <laughs> and you give everybody a little bit. And it's the same thing with the rock dust. Right here I have five different types of rock dust. This actually around the world it could be hundreds because they're from certain places, you know. There's, there's this stuff that's from Colorado, you see, and there's this stuff from, let's see, where is this stuff? Ozarks, okay. And this stuff over here is from um, Minnesota. <laughs> and so, and this stuff right over here is from Southern California. And this stuff over here is a blend of different things from around the world. So I like to guess, the point is, these things are rich in different minerals and deficient in other minerals. And so when you spread, blend together, you get a nice blend of, of minerals. Because that's why you do the rock dust. So I'm going to go and cover some of these different ones that we have here for you and tell you a little bit about them, okay? So we'll look at that one first over there. Today we're at the farm again, and I'm going to continue my talks about rock dust. You know, in the uh, all the things that's going on in the news now, you heard about the it's called the ambrosia beetle. The, it's a beetle that attacks and killing trees left and right. Over 250 species it attacks, and then you know about the citrus canker disease and all these different things are going on, and they all say incurable. But here's the cure. Here's the answer. But if you avoid the problem in the first place, you're not going to get it. So that's why I talk a lot about rock dust. Because all these plants are having a trace mineral deficiency. That's what rock dust is all about. But rock dust by itself ain't going to do you nothing. You want to get the rock dust and the bacteria together. So that's why I also talk about compost. But today we're going to talk about rock dust. And i got five different types of rock dust. And another batch is a mixture of rock dust. Because, you know, rock dust comes from the different places that they're mined. We have some that comes from Colorado. Uh, the Ozark Mountains, Minnesota. This comes from Southern California. I have personally ordered rock dust from Africa just to see what it's like. Okay, right. So today we're talking about rock dust. And, you know, I talk a lot about rock dust all the time because it's minerals. Trace minerals is all about. This is a natural way. Actually, it's not natural. It's, it's, it, actually, excuse me, it is natural. It's not organic. When I talk about when I do things natural and organic, rock dust are rocks. <laughs> They're not... They're not organic, they're natural. Oh, wait. Is there an eagle coming after me? Good enough for now. Oh, <laughs> nice to stick your finger in there, and they're good for, no. This is called azomite, comes from Colorado. It's a very well-known source of rock dust. You can see this particular one is pelletized. They also sell in a really fine version. I like to pelletize because it's really easy to use, and it does break down fast, but the fine does become available very fast. This is rich in a variety of trace minerals from calcium, iron, magnesium, and it's a, it's a very nice, uh, even blend. It's not very rich in one thing or another, but it has all, almost all the exotics. Okay, so that's just called azomite, pelletized, really nice. You can see all the different types of rock dust in here. That, I mean, it's the same rock dust, but different types of uh, material that they use in there. See, very nice, okay? So this stuff here is called calphosphorus, phos. It's called calphos, because it's calcium and phosphorus. The main thing that, it's, that it has is 20% phosphate for your phosphorus. And you see it comes in a pelletized form as well as in a little ready, already ground up fine form. Very, very important. This is more important than almost any of the other minerals. 
So that's why I get it this way. And yes, it's a, it's a naturally occurring mineral. Okay, next. Another one. Totally different looking. It comes from the mountains of o Ozark Mountains. Really rich in all the uh, iron and calcium. It's, it's uh, it, well, it's 1% calcium. It has 9% magnesium. That's what I like about it. This is like a really natural source of magnesium. Okay? There it is, very dusty. <coughs> Okay? No? So this one is from Southern California. It's one of my favorites. This is 30% calcium. Neutral pH. All these other pHs, one of the reasons why they do them in pelletized is because they're way too high. The powder since people burn stuff. So they make it pelletized. It blocks the pH that's so high it makes it easier to use. But this stuff is neutral pH. You can't burn it if you want to. 30% calcium. And it, you know where it comes from? It's it comes from underneath the ground. In, in Southern California, they have a hot mud bath place. You go there, you soak yourself in this hot bubbling mud. That's what this is. Rich, 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 rich. Very, very nice. He doesn't make it in pelletized form, but this is the way it is. Very, very fine, can be used, instantly available. Calcium is the other thing very, very important for plants. So that's, that's four types of rock dust right there, and there's one more type I want to show you. So this one here is actually a blend of about 10 different types of rock dust. This is my uh, Invisible Gardener Special Rock Dust Blend, available on my website. Stop by today. <laughs> I try to do I try to do a sales pitch. But this is what I do is I blend the rock dust. Not only does it have rock dust in it, but I remember I said you have to have the bacteria. So I put the bacteria in with two. All different types of bacteria, whether it's powder or soluble form, from ecto and mycorrhiza, all the good stuff right in here. See, and then this stuff here, you add it to the soil, and, and you can also, uh, any of these rock dust should be added to the soil, but you can also add a little bit to liquid, make a rock dust tea out of it. Put, basically, put it in a cup in a pantyhose, tie it up on a ball, let it sit in one of these. These are about, uh, what, five gallons of water, let it sit in there, and then and squeeze it a little bit, and within a day, you have this nice little mi milky substance, liquid, and that's what you spray. That's how you get the rock dust onto the plants. And because it's, uh, it's also like a... Um, Rock dust is also a form of uh, um, diatomaceous earth in it. It has diatomaceous earth in it, which is a natural uh, plant deterrent. So when you spray, it leaves a film coating. It will kill the beneficials if you spray anything, but the ideal way to do it is to apply it to the soil, add it to the compost, add rock dust to the compost as you go, and you have a wonderfully uh, healthy plant. It won't be attacked by all these various different diseases because all of, all of the diseases, they rely on having the plant having a low brick level. And I talk about bricks being a, a measurement of sugar, but it's also a measurement of how much minerals. It's also a measurement of how much, cal how much, uh, uh, how much uh, sugar, of course, it's the sugar le level, and how much carbohydrates. It just happens that the higher the, the bricks, the higher the carbohydrates. Insects don't, don't like carbohydrates. Shh. Okay, that's it.